right here we go I think uh, yeah the last last time I was working on this on Tuesday because I'm trying to do Tuesdays and Thursdays um, I was accidentally improving uh, the map reader so the coder is read the JSON from from tile to support the properties, custom properties, the flip. So we can specify that um, an entity has to be looking to the left instead of the default, which is looking to the right. Um, yeah, that, that was kind of easier than I expected. I don't know why I tried to do it before and it was not very good. I, I couldn't really get to the right, what I wanted. So I'm thinking now that perhaps the map animations are not going to be that complicated so um let's give it a go so okay so these are the ties i have currently not many so let's i mean i, I could have done this before but to be honest today it's not been a day that I have time or energy or anything so let's do a quick animation uh, so we can play with that I mean, it doesn't have to be really amazing just to have something to look at um, I guess something like this Is that okay? No, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, I was thinking about something like spinning, um, but to not draw with pressure, what I'm going to do is something simple. One, two. Yeah, it's because the resolution is kind of terrible. Enough for testing, isn't it? Okay, let's go to tile and make this. Let's make this. Animation tile. I put the camera to in a different place and I don't see the screen. So that was a very bad idea. So animations. Let's make it bigger. And okay. No, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> How does it work actually? Not completely sure. It's not. Okay, with one type, double click, double click works. But that's not what I want, right? Because it's only adding one. Oh, has to be one type at a time. Are you kidding me? Yes, because it's a, pro it's a property of a tile. Oh, if it's, that's how it works, it's going to be terrible. I don't think I can use it. No, but it's going to be like that because each of these is a tile. So that means... Hmm... Well, I don't want it to change the size of the tile set. So, can I make it to... No, I can't because... So, basically, the way it works is that you get one tile. 
um, a, a property which is animation and it has a list of tile IDs. So it means that he, the unit is a tile. That's not good, is it? Can we add a new tile set? Maybe. <clears throat> so tile sets. Let's add a new one. Uh, animations. Embedding map. The source is going to be the same one. Um, and let's do it 16 by 16. So now um, we go to properties, then we go to animations, one, two, and three. And let's make it like 300, something like that. It's just for the preview because in the, in the game, I don't think I'm going to use that. Okay, cool. So, say that and plus animation from the tile set. So now in animations, I guess on the back, I can just, I mean, it's not showing, but it should show. You can see it. Yeah, okay. So this tile set has animation now. So I can put it there. And if I do somewhere, so show all tile animations. I, it's not really working, is it? Why is not including that small one over there? I don't know. Um, let's do something. So we remove everything. Yeah. Okay. I, it may be just a display of the review. Uh, we don't care about them most of the time. Right. I save now. Let's take a look to the. the map now because it's going to be a little bit different right so yeah the data has changed uh, in the tile layer but now we have two tile sets and I'm confused. How does it work? So this one is called tile set. And this one is called animations. Why does this one has an... Oh, because I didn't remove the animation. Mm -hmm. Didn't I? Okay. Let's cover this. Uh, oh. So I need to do that. Yeah, there was some weird behavior. I need to. I need to, needed to do apply or something. Okay. Okay, now it looks better. So, we have two tile sets and they come in order. Um, let's see what happens now with this. I wish I could make this smaller, but. Okay, so. So there is one tile set. Let's think about this. So we have now two tile sets. The first GID, global ID, maybe, is one. And then this one is 261. Yeah, I mean, in theory, they could have different 
Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, because I will have to support multiple tile sets. How I am doing that at the moment, I don't remember. So a tile set has columns width and height. Width and height is the tile set or the tile. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, so there must be an instance here. I don't remember for the tile set. So mm, mm, mm. okay. So there has to be an instance. So it loves the JSON, right? Uh, yeah, tile set here. Oh, okay. So width uh, and he and height are the tile width and the tile height, and we still ha and we have the first uh, global ID. Now the question is mm, because I'm lo uh, mm, mm, mm. should I load the image and have a te texture? Uh, oh, it can be the same. Let's do a shortcut with that because at the moment when I load the map. Um, when I load the map, I pass a texture, so I'm not using these properties to get the, the image that I'm using in the texture. So I think we can keep going with that um, for now, well, in general, really. And It's going to change how we render the map quite a lot, right? Okay, so let's see if we can read this anyway. So the JSON map data is going to have now multiple type sets, right? And the type sets. Hey, hello, unresolved error. Are you doing fine? I'm doing fine as well. Not bad. Trying to write some Haskell. Hmm. So, yeah, so it's going to be multiple tiles. Man, I don't remember how this works. It's kind of. Mm -mm. So, the map data is going to be. It has to have multiple tile sets. Haskell. In game dev. Yes, everything is possible. You're absolutely right. So, mm, mm, mm. so tile sets, it's going to be multiples, multiple tile sets. And I guess that's going to make sense. Okay, so let's look at this for now. So we love the file. And okay, it's not going to be tile set. It's going to be tile sets, right? I guess because we're going to have multiple tile sets now. Hello, Dart Sock D four R Sock. Just discover your stream. I'm curious about Haskell. What's your opinion about the tooling, dependency management version of libraries? Are you try OCaml? That's all. Yes, cool. And if you, what is your? I haven't tried OCaml. Um, and about Haskell, the tooling is kind of. Some parts are really good. Some parts less so. Um, for example, I'm using Beam, and if you use the uh, um, Haskell has a language server, if you use that, it's kind of, you know, it works as an ID and it's super useful um, when you are writing code, uh, especially when you're exploring things. Um, and versions, libraries, and everything, dependency management, in general, is okay. 
perhaps my my only complaint is that it's difficult to do cross compilation at the moment so i'm working on linux and if i want to make a binary for windows or mac it's not easy and what do i like about haskell functional programming it's a very it's, it's a very beautiful language um if you do functional programming already um haskell is very nice um I mean, you need to like the type system, you need to like functional programming, really. But what do you think about the compilation error? Hmm, yeah, compilation errors. It can be complicated. Yeah, you're right. It's more about learning. It's most of the problems are the type systems, to be honest. For example, here it's telling me something, you know. I said not in the scope, right? So yeah, because we change it to be tile sets. Um, I don't know. Usually, what I found um, when I found what I find harder is because in in Haskell you have a very wide range of abstractions. And you can do kind of what I'm doing here is almost basic functional programming without using a lot of fancy stuff on Haskell, and it's working just fine. Uh, but some people use some abstractions that can be quite difficult. What about assembly? What is a functional programming language? Okay, uh, you can do. I don't think you can. You do a, a functional programming in assembly. I don't know because you need Im immutable values, right? Can you do immutable values in assembly? Um, yeah, I don't know. And I don't know Camel, so I can't really compare. <laughs> well, you can do a lot of things with assembler. Um, you can do object-oriented programming, for example, but functional is kind of... Anyway, so when I'm trying here, what is your favorite book? A book about uh, to learn Haskell. Um, being a C++ programmer. Mm, there is one book that I didn't dislike. Actually, I have it open here. Um, so this book was written... Uh, how long ago? Not that long ago. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, I recommend you this book. Definitely. I mean, it's just scratching the surface. Um, but what I like about it is that it, it may get you to write Haskell very quickly. And that's probably a good thing. Um, so basically, learn you a Haskell. Uh, but Miran Lipova, I don't know how to pronounce his name, so I'm not going to try. Uh, but he wrote the book and then he put the book online after a while and and this is a version based on that that has been dated and and made a little bit nicer to read because uh, the book has some issues and they, i think they have been amended in this book it's not a bad book to get started um i think if you know another language already it might work for you but it's kind of it's very different and you need to start very small, really. In my case, because I had, I had already uh, five years of experience writing a Scala, which is functional as well, uh, it was kind of easier to move to Haskell uh, in a way. Something uh, similar. Anyway, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to change my map renderer to support multiple layers so I can have animations. Well, I want animations in the background. I didn't plan to have multiple tile sets, but, but, but because tile will set the uh, animations based on the size of the tile set, of the tiles, and I'm using 8x8, eight eight, I don't want to make animations of 8x8. Eight eight. I want to make them larger so what I'm thinking is, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be doing it like this, but I'm thinking, well, 
I can support multiple tile sets. Uh, and and that will be okay because when I look at the map data, it will. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work. Yeah. Okay. I can I can give you a tip on that. Uh, uh, so I, I'm going to share with you the very first thing that I wrote in Haskell, just in case it helps you. Um, which is this one. Um, you can read it without knowing Haskell. It may be a little bit confusing, but um, so this is coming from you know what is Pomodoro. Pomodoro is a way of tracking time, right? When you're working. So, um, which Pomodoro is tomato in Italian. So I found. Uh, this guy, I think I mentioned it here or somewhere. Um, no, I didn't mention it here. So basically, um, you know, I saw uh, a guy on Twitch. He made a, a Pomodoro tool in Go. And I think he was learning Go at that point. Yeah, I put the link already. Can you see the link already? I'm not sure if you can see the links I put on the chat. But anyway, so this is the tool. Um, right, so I mean, it's currently 137 lines, um, but considering the density of Haskell, oh, the lab, yeah, you're right. Considering the density, but it's already doing input output and it has some complexity. So yeah, this is the first thing I wrote in Haskell, which is not a lot, really. I mean, yeah, it's kind of simple. I would suggest you to work on something simple like that, like in this case, a uh, Pomodoro. I don't even know if I have it uh, available here. So to, no, I don't have it. Um, Tomato. So, so let's run it. Just compiling, and there you go. So, oh no, so tomato like this. Okay, so it has a command line interface, quite simple, and and you know you can start the Pomodoro and you know start it right so now it's telling me you know it keeps updating the time can you see that so in 45 minutes it will say you know your Pomodoro is finished it's super simple super silly but I found it quite like a very small yeah I will go with something like that a small command line tool um, and and go from there. D it, you know it has enough for you to get your busy for a bit, because obviously you don't know the. See the problem with any language is that you. I'm so you're using the language, right? But the main problem is that you, you don't know you don't know the libraries and you don't know the methods and all that stuff, right? So I remember when I wrote that, I spent most of my time just trying to understand how to parse the command line arguments because I didn't understand the library. But the problem on itself is very simple. So just keep it simple and keep building on top of that. For example, here I'm using this library for JSON that I kind of find it a little bit awkward sometimes. And I'm wondering if I should use a different one. So it's the, that's the kind of thing that you don't know. Yeah, it's a good point. I think um, another good thing about this book is that uh, looking at the chapters, uh, like it's like starting very simple and like, oh, so yeah, oh, see. Can you see this? This is the history of me accessing this. So I was trying to do something with lists and, you know, I don't remember. 
and I went back and you can check because obviously again you don't know the API right so and and the names are different than in other languages I mean that's kind of common so this book is good for that anyway so let's see what is the complaint about this um see i mean the errors are kind of ooh. yeah of course because now ts is a list so uh so we're going to use the first one on the list well we can call it ts Keep it short, but... so it's a list so let's use the first one uh what is complaining about ts is, it's a list right yeah it's a list of tile sets so oh because see I, I'm, I'm just using the syntax from from Scala. So, yeah, so it's a function, right? So I need to do um, the head of the of the list, and then on that access to the field width. So it has to be like this. So yeah. That's a problem as well. Hey, racing the beam, how you doing? Um, when you do, when you work with two different pro languages that are kind of similar, I keep, I keep mixing the syntax of them. Right. So now we tell him, "Ts is a list of tie sets. Can you give me the head?" And the head is saying, "For any type A." The brackets is a list, so in a list of A, it's going to give you A, a type A, right? So, uh, okay, so let's see why it's not rendering the help for that. Well, it's giving you an example, basically. So the head of a list is giving you the first item of the list, and, and that's it. Extract the first element of a list, which must be not empty. Because this is empty, you get an exception. So, because I'm changing this to read multiple style sets, uh, and previously there was only one, uh, this code was wrong because we need to access the property of a tile set instead of the list. Um, because I'm going to get the first one, which is the actual tile set, and the second one now it's going to be the one that has the animations i just need to get the head which is the first of the list i could be doing as well for example coming from c you could say you know you know zero right uh, this operator gives you an item so given a list of a and an integer it gives you an a so basically what it does is is a list index so basically uh Give me the item zero of the list. And the editor is saying, why you don't use head? Which is what I did. And I said, yeah, you're right. It's better to use head. There you go. Um, okay, so there must be other things broken here. Yes, okay. So let's get the head of the die set. Uh, and actually, Thinking about this, um, I probably want to extract this. Map data. Um, because it's tight says now, right? And we get the head. I'm just tidying up the code so it compiles and it behaves the same. I'm going to do the same. And then uh, I will iterate on that to actually get now. So I can iterate and get the, the second die set to do what I want. Okay, so that's probably all. 
the only thing I don't like is that this is this should be uh, I said I like it better and just to make it cleaner we can say TS is the head of and we use that here because it's going to be more readable right um nice okay so hopefully cross fingers it should do the same although now it's reading well depends let's see if it's passing the tie set properly no it's not so i broke it but the types are okay so it's 168 what did it do oh it's parsing the tie sets uh result mana close empty <laughs> okay so math data we have tie sets which is a list of tie set and this is the tie set and do, 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 tie set do I have yes I have an instance to read the tie set hmm I'm thinking it's because now this is wrong it has to be just a JSON object yeah because I was doing a shortcut so basically I know that the tile sets is a, is a list but because I was having only one I was saying you know just get the first one of the list but that doesn't work anymore uh, because I'm asking for all of them I, I think that's a problem I mean, I'm making this prayer to learn Haskell as well. Yes, it works. There you go. So, so it's doing the right thing. Uh, what it's drawing is for the tile set that we're drawing. And there is a black gap here. There is a black ha ha gap here. Because uh, if we hide, can we hide the a tile set? Can we do that? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Maybe properties. No, we can't. Anyway, so basically, um, yeah, I'm using SDL too. Yes, it's a C library. Um, so there are bindings for Haskell uh, that are actually quite nice, although sometimes it's a little bit confusing because they kind of uh, change the API to be more Haskell-ish, I guess, and and sometimes because I have a little a little bit of experience with SDL in C, it, it the the binders kind of confuse me because I expect a little bit of behavior in, that you get in C, but it's the name is similar, but it's not doing the same thing. Oh yeah, it's actually quite... I was looking at that recently. Uh, yeah, there you go. There's an example here. So calling Haskell from C uh, and the other way around is quite simple. No, this is not what I wanted to show you. I don't know. I was looking at this, but it's not exactly what you're talking about. Yes, you can call C from Haskell quite easy. Um, it's not very difficult to do. Although, you know, C is not Haskell, so you need to be careful because things can break and stuff like that very easily. With C++, hmm, I don't know. Uh, let me see. I mean, at the moment, so, so Cabal is what you use to specify your dependencies, which is, you know, the dependencies are these. I know that SDL, I don't think I have any dependency in C++. So I'm not completely sure. I don't know, to be honest. Um, 
Right, okay, so... I guess... So I'm reading the, the tie set, but I'm not doing anything with it. So... No problem, you're welcome. So now is the render, I think. And I think the render is rendering nothing. Because... Why? Let's look at this. I mean, this render function is quite nice, but obviously... So, so it renders a map. So we get the renderer, the map, and the viewport. Well, okay, so it's a little bit complicated because I do some tricks for the scrolling. Um, because basically I'm playing with the viewport. Uh, yeah, I need to clean up a little bit the screen because it's kind of pretty easy now for testing. So I'm doing a viewport so I can manage the scroll easier. Um, uh, is that going to affect me? I don't think it is. So basically, uh, this... Okay, so we have all the tie layers and for each tie layer, I go through it. So the layer is going to give me a list of integers and those integers are basically the IDs of the tiles, right? So... Okay, so when we were trying to draw is on the screen, then we render the tile. And we access into the... Okay, so render tile is the one we need to touch. So render tile, it gets X, Y, and the tile. Um, mm, mm, mm. Oh, which, how do we know which tile set it is? How do we know? Uh, do we know? How do we know that? So the tile set, we are collecting to, 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 to some data. And I wonder if we need to collect more things. So it's telling me the first global ID. Uh, so... Right, so we have the tile sets. So the first global ID is one. The first one is here is 200 and... Oh, because we need to keep the tile count. Because if the tile ID, if the tile ID we get in... Okay, so the tile ID is going to be over the tile count because obviously it's it starts in 261, right? So it's not going to be in this tile set. So we need to find the tile set for the tile. And for that, we need to have the tile cone, which is something we are not keeping. But it's okay, we can add that easily. So we add the tile cone, which is, which is an integer, right? And in here, we get the tile count. That's it. Simple. Nothing else is going to change. Now, render tile is getting some information here. It's not quite right now. Because we need to get... So basically, um, here, uh, you know, all this is uh, is auxiliary, but it's not variables because they are constants, right? All the values here are immutable. The only thing that you can do to modify a value is make a copy. So these are constants. So this doesn't have any cost. Yeah, I can write whatever I want here and it's the same effect. So at the end, this is a tile set. It's the same if I go 
you know, and I access to this wherever I'm using it. So the thing here is that for the tie set, okay, so the tie set, this tie set is not being used. This information is not being used here. So I think it's safe. So, oh no, because I need the tie with, uh, 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 uh. Man, I don't know how is this going to play. Mm -mm. Let me let me look at the data because I know I'm not completely sure. This is that it has to be doing something with the layers, right? Okay. So let's take a look at this. So it has changed something. Okay. So layers data. Uh, the problem with this is very difficult to see. Okay, so this has to have a name, right? Of properties. Okay, tail layer base. This is the one I change. Okay. Can we see a div? It's going to help us at all. No, it's not going to help us at all because it's going to. Hmm. Okay, so 261 is the first one, right? I don't know, to be honest. Okay, let's, let's do something. Let's go and put it on the corner here. All oh, right, it should be here, right? So it has changed something. I don't know what it is. That's not good, is it? I mean, I'm sure this is the base layer. Was it the one with AD? Okay, so and we just added something at the beginning right hmm maybe i can't do what i'm trying to do i'm not sure i mean it's definitely changing something see but i don't know what is actually changing uh, and it's kind of very difficult to see, isn't it? And also, how, how is going to do it? Like, I put the tile on this position. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is using as a reference... See, that blue square i don't understand that there is something in the tile set we need to change <laughs> that's not okay so hmm 16 per 16 there is nothing else here mm -mm -mm. again i put the camera in the wrong place so it's going to be id 26 um and when we look at the animations, I don't know. I don't know. But the fact that, I mean, if I do this and I say, there you go, 287, right? But that's not what we want, really. So I guess. Is the blue square is where it's placing the tile on the base. Ah. 
is because the layer okay so ba -ba 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 -ba. what are the layer properties i'm clicking already here so horizontal offset parallax factor i don't know what those mean but i i thought it's a tight set no because mm, no it has to be somewhere as um map properties there you go tile width is eight per eight right it's eight by eight so it means that when we put this tile that is 16 by 16 what is going to place it uh not in the right place by the looks of it we want it to be on the top left so when i get to here it's the top left that is going to tell me that i need to write a larger tile in there i mean it's kind of working isn't it because we can see the black so there is a black gap and it's because i'm not painting a tile in there right so this black here is because we're not painting it what's going on why is using that uh, there is nothing here to, to change isn't it uh, so edit uh, uh, uh. There must be a way. There must be a way. Tyler stamps. What is that? No idea. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know, but that's not what I want. Can I do something about it? I mean, we know is the instead of being the top left, we know is the bottom left corner. So I guess we could correct that. This is still not not great. So. No. Type properties. Type ID with eight. Man, I have no idea. Why is using that one? It doesn't matter where I click, so it's not that. Yeah. It's always going to get that one. But why? Hmm, if I do this? Yeah, see, it's placing the tile in there. <laughs> but why? Can I change it? There is anything I can do about that? I don't know. Um, yeah, that's not it. It's not about flipping it. Mm, not about rotating it. So that's not the problem. Is some something I can do? Apparently not. And what happens if I paint an area? So if I get this, uh, okay, this one, not good. Hmm. It's doing funny stuff when it's trying to feel it because it's using the bottom. Mm. I don't know. Could be a bug on tile. What's the problem? Oh man, how are you doing? Well, 
I'm trying to so do something that probably I should be doing uh, because I'm trying to render two different layers from tile and they have different size. So tile is doing something more or less, but it's not what I want. So, so I guess I could be doing this that looks wrong. But it should work because so the gap is in the same place because no, we're not drawing anything. So, I mean, it's kind of not in the right place, <laughs> but uh, we can try. We can try. Um, can I do another work here? No, I can't. Mm, yeah, because I need to find... Okay, so... Find... Tile set. So, given an integer... What is that we want to know? We want the tile set. Do we want the tile set? Or is it just the tile width and tile red? It's only the width and the red. So let's do that. So I entice it. Or yeah, let's call it for now that. So given the tile, what I we're going to do is we need to find the tile set that has that tile so we can return no we need to return the tile set because we need more things we need all this stuff so it's okay we'll return the tile set uh... I mean for now we can do this so the columns mm -mm. so given that I said I'm thinking I'm thinking all right let's try to find that I said and let's go from there so uh, how do we do that I guess it's a fine right not and then it's going to give me the tile set and I'm going to do something with it and so what is fine doing oh I need to find probably the type right so it's going to be map data tile sets I mean BP with knows Haskell, so at some point he's going to start screaming at the screen by looking at me writing this. But so yeah, and how oh, how does this work? I have no idea. It's no fine what I need to use. Hmm. So, so fine on a foldable on that database. This is the one we want. And what is it doing? Why is not giving me any help? Did it import for data list when I selected that? No, maybe I need to do that. Maybe. Okay. No, it's not helping me. I need your help. What is fine doing? Okay, so. So let's look for help. Find. This, this is what we want. It's a foldable. 
yeah, all the list. That is exactly what I'm looking for. So giving the A return a boolean. So so um T which is a type set uh type count is less than tile. No, tilecon has to be bigger than tile. No, that's not true. <laughs> First kit has to be less than the tile, and the tile count is bigger than the tile. Something like this. And what is complaining about? Defined, no, that's not one. So, could not find a splitter with that one, maybe tight set. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, we can do. Okay, maybe tight set. List to maybe do. And some guards? List to maybe do. How about list to maybe do? Hmm. Is to maybe do on some guards. I mean, just reading that sentence, I could spend an hour until I try. I understand what you mean. So, list to maybe. There is something that you can do at least to maybe. Uh, something I can do here. List to maybe. <gasps> oh my god! Amazing. So, given a list. Function the list may be function returns nothing on an empty list or just uh, but but I, why are you saying that? I don't really need that. Where are you talking about this head over here? When I get one tile set, that's okay. I mean there is at least one. It should be a non-empty list, but I don't even know if that. Yeah, what I'm trying to do now is to find the tile set that has the tile I'm looking for. And it's going to have it, for sure. Um, so, although you're absolutely right, it's not a problem here, I guess. So, now I need to find the tile set. And let's do here. You can collect first kits from all the tile sets and then think from there. Well, the tile has to be bigger than the first. The first one. And also has to be less than the tile count. Otherwise it's not on that tile, on that tile set, right? I mean Let's see if I, I could be I could be wrong. So we have looking at the tile sets and the tile set. So the first one, the first ID is one, and it has two hundred and sixty. All right, all right, all right. So that's not what I want. So the tile count. Yeah. Yeah. So. So if this is true, then the tile is in this tile set. And that's the tile set we want, right? Uh, right. Okay. So. Okay, so I need to find the tile set and then which is what we're trying to do here, but now this is not right. Because we need it's not so the tile is in the first uh, GID but that's for the first tile set and now we don't know it's not that the one we want. <laughs> 
we need to find out the right one. Now I need to call this function, right? And both columns and sub these two needs to come from the tile set uh, that we get in the from file tile set. So I'm confused. I don't know how to do this with cards. Can I just would it be too crazy? No, because I need to have the mm, mm, I need to have the tie set defined somewhere, but I can do can I do where again? Yes, of course I can. So yeah, okay. So tie set is going to be find the tie set for this tile. And it's going to be the a maybe tile set, right? So so can I do? How do you do that? From maybe? <laughs> so from maybe. Uh, function for maybe. Okay, and it and it returns a uh, okay. Okay, so we can do this. So I fall back to the first one. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. Just case it. Okay, I'm listening to you. No, you know what I'm going to do. Wait a minute. So did it import something? Yeah, the phone maybe. No, I was using that already. Yeah, okay, fair enough. No, I think I think I know what I'm going to do. Because so this style and the first gear uh gear ID. So this one is when there is no tile, right? Because the first gear ID is going to be one. So now it's not going to find that. No, it's going to find that I said. I can't do that. I don't like this one. Um, and also, I want to check this one as well. And tile. Okay, and the first, sorry, the first. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. It has to be bigger than the tile. So. It could be that it's in the tile set, but it's for example zero, which means that there is no tile. So I want that to be nothing. I don't want to find that tile set. Why? Because here, what I can do is instead of doing this, uh, then I can do, if it's nothing, the tile set, then, and, all right, it means that it didn't find it, right? So this is the case that we have. So we don't draw anything. Yeah, but I think it's better what you're saying because if we use uh, if we use case, we extract the value already. So it's the case. You're absolutely right. So case. And then it's going to be better. Nothing, then there's nothing to draw, right? And if it's, we have a, and I should use a different name, uh, because I'm using tie set already for different things. So, Actually, we don't need this now because we can use it here. Yeah, there you go. I mean, there is a little bit of delay, but that was perfect. You love case. I love case as well. Yeah, I was mentioning that my, usually the problem I, I tend to have is that 
basically, when I wrote the Scala, I used Haskell syntax. So, oh, I know how to do it in Haskell. But, but then, when I write in Haskell, Scala starts to get in the way. So I guess I never happy. Okay, so let's call it TS uh, because we use syntax for something else over there, and I don't want to get in the way. So these two things are going to come from TS. Uh, TS. TS as well. And uh, it's going to be why call it tile with? Uh, yeah, I'm using that at all. Yeah, we're using that for the viewport. I'm going to leave it like that for now. I will get it to work and then. I'm not sure if this is correct. Let me think. No, it's not correct. We need to use the... Uh, okay, so the base style set is 8 per 8. So the first style set is going to still have some special meaning for us. So we're going to keep it like that. Uh, Where's complain about this? It's not the as a tile set. Excuse me, what do you mean? Uh, oh yeah, no, I don't think so. Okay, so give me a sec because I think I, I removed stuff here. So, oh yeah, you're right. And it's calls, no columns. So you've been here like five minutes and you know better my code than myself. Excellent. Well done. Yeah, thank you. That's actual paper. I mean, okay, so this has to be this, but the width and the height is going to be uh, the actual of the tie set. Hey, this is looking good. Okay, so now. This should render the tile we put it over there from the other, so for the second tile set, from the second, using the second tile set. Uh, okay, interesting. It's not rendering anything. So I guess we're getting a lot of nothing in here. So, so I suspect this is wrong. So, so the tile has to be bigger than the first. Man, that sounds okay to me. Sorry, what is TX? Oh, all right. No. So, yeah, it has to be the width and height in here. All right. Yeah, because the, the tile width and tile height uh, of the X and Y coordinates needs to be from the first tile set because that's what we use in the viewport. But for the source of the tile, it's not. It's still not working, but that was definitely wrong. So the source of the tile and the destination has to be the width and height of the tile set. So it's going to be eight by eight, right? So I think it's not drawing anything because it's getting in here. 
And if it's getting in here, it's because this is not doing the right thing. So what we're saying is that the tile has to be bigger than the, oh no, bigger or equal. Uh, or equal. Uh, and then the first guarantee account has to be bigger than the tile. Yeah, I think so. I think that's about right. Okay. So it's finding something. The tile is bigger than the first giddy of the tile set. Yeah, and it's working because I put the condition wrong, but because I was putting the equal. Can you do that in one line in Haskell without the and? No, you can't, right? All right. Okay, so we can see the number one in there. Which I guess we could be doing it better. So we have a better reference. So let's make it. I mean, it's just for testing, isn't it? Okay, so that tile, that tile over there is 16 by 16, whereas the rest is 8 by 8. And this is definitely equal. But the sign of the, of the condition was wrong. Direction, sign? Hmm. What is that? All right. Cool, it works working. So that tile is 16 by 16. So now the next thing we need to do is to animate that. And I guess, um, because the map is completely immutable, right? Uh, so I think all render needs something. Uh, like um, so the viewport and maybe an integer uh, that can be the step for example and then and then nothing wait a minute okay wait 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 we're going to quick here okay so this is just all this stuff I have done it's not that much, but it feels a lot. It's only to render from the right tile set. Now, this is still not supporting the animations. So, each tile set needs to have, well, uh, uh, okay. So it's called tiles here. But I think we are not going to keep it as tiles. What I think we're going to do is we're going to keep a list of animations that will have the... Uh, I don't know how to do this better. Mm. But the idea is I'm go we're going to have a, a, list of, uh, a list of IDs, basically. Uh, this could be a map, I guess. Could be a map. Or maybe it could be a list of maybes, right? A list of maybes with a list. Maybe list. So basically, if there is no animation, you will have a list of nothings. In this case, of, of how many? What is the last one? A tile count of 65. 65, a list of 65 nothings. And the position 26 will be just a list of IDs, which is 26, 27, and 28. So with that, when we are going to render a tile, we get the, the tile set. My tile library. 
Oh, I'm reading a JSON. I'm not using any library. And that might be my problem, isn't it? That could be my problem. No, I'm just reading the JSON. I know you see. Is that what you mean? <laughs> I'm not using any libraries. Uh, you can save a JSON in tile, and I'm using that. Maybe it's not a good idea, but right. So that's the plan. Doesn't sound too crazy. I think it's about right. Yeah, there is a JSON tile with all the stuff. It's the type as animation field. Mm. Yeah, I know. But then I don't know. I'm learning Haskell and I'm doing it myself. I mean, you could be questioning as well. Why are you using Haskell to make a platform game and not using Godot, Godot, Godot or whatever? Well, you know. Anyway, I think that's what I'm going to do. At least, or maybe, maybe least. And Godot is way harder than Haskell. You know, I don't know. Hmm. I think I'm going to do that. And when we get the tie set, we can see: Do we have animation for that tile? If it's nothing, then we just draw the tile. But if there is a if there is a list, we pass a step here, and based on the step, we cycle on those frames. That that could work. So we need to get the tiles. Yeah, and also, uh, JSON. Yeah, I'm not even using that library for JSON, which is probably a bad idea. But I saw the dependencies and I thought, mm, that's a lot of things. If I want to compile in Windows, cross compile and all that stuff. And I went with this one, and which is just JSON, which is, again, also a bad idea because it looks like some things are fiddly or I don't know how to use it which is probably the thing, right? so... so, okay oh, I don't remember how I did this so... and I did it the other day, okay, get object property okay, so this is what I did the other day It's going to be the same. Maybe. Okay, let's do that. So it's going to be data. Uh... I'm going to call it animation, although it's not. It's not it, right? That is it. Or tile. Tile animations. Which is going to be is going to be blah, 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 blah. if it's there it's just frames I guess which is at least uh no that's not true it's not true it's not true it's not true uh it's going to be animation which is going to be a list of animation so and it's going to be duration an integer and a tile id an integer Sorry about that. Oh, no, I did something wrong. Let's rewind. Oh, yeah. 
sei il quale. Ok. So. Uh, I need an instance for this, right? So, instance. Yes, so tile animations. Where it's going to be similar to this one, for example. Um, and it's going to be uh, tile animations. And it's going to be it's a list of no, it's already that. So just like this, right? Just like that. No, it's not like that. <laughs> Oh yes, because it doesn't have instance for animation. Okay, let's give it an instance. Tile tile calls that frame in the docs. Frame. Uh, all right, okay. Tile animations. Frame. Okay. So in stages, JSON frame. Okay. So, so this is going to be frame is going to have Duration. Uh, no, I don't need duration. I just need the, the tile ID, right? Because I'm not going to use that. So why is complaining that? Um, illegal turn level use of the. Mm, mm, mm. What do you mean? What does it mean? Oh, sorry. And it's complaining because it's saying... What is that syntax? Is that a new thing? I have... I don't know what it is. But it keeps suggesting that I should, use in, should be using this syntax. Let's use it. Why not? So, okay, so this is what I'm going to do for parsing, and I don't think I should be doing it like this. So, because I'm not going to use that. So, okay, so I, run, I only really need frame, right? A list of frames, isn't it? So, so what I'm going to do is first, um, okay, so let's get fill from the object and it's going to be size. Is that right? No, I'm thinking. So tiles will be in the tile set so what i'm looking for is animation i don't know if i'm doing this right so no what did i do in the objective oh, i don't remember okay so tiles we need to get it like this because we may not have it right so yeah so 
What is your tile type? Because animation it is 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 fear. I don't have a tile type. I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't think I'm going to use it. Um so I have this idea because the other day was doing something similar. So so I will add the frame. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. How did I do that? I don't remember what I mean. So, okay. No, I'm going to do it like I did it the other day. So I guess, okay, okay, okay. So I need a, fun I'm going to do a function. Let's, let's do that. And then we can go from there. Yeah, I'm mixing things, but it's going to be difficult to explain it if I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so it's going to be get I'm going to call it get animations or tiles. Animations or tiles. Uh no, animations. Then so with this we're going to get tiles, which is an array of of animations right and then here we can extract the frames so and the frame has the tile id right so i need to do the instance of that uh, do I need to do that? No, I don't. We'll see how it goes. So, so object animations, then we're going to have a frame that is going to be value from object. So, and then we don't need to do any of this. It's an empty list of nothing. Uh, no, I don't know what I'm doing with this, to be honest. So this is an array and I'm getting, no, that's not correct has to be an object uh, because we're looking for a list of frames right so animation is a list and tiles now I think you're right we need to have a tight tiles I was pretending I could skip steps because that's what I did with the property uh, and the direction so basically um, so for example so here so this is line has properties but this property is optional for example this one this other slime doesn't have it right so what i did is you know the slime has x y and the direction is looking right so this get object property what it does is it tries to get objects properties if it's not there then it returns right which is the default right so i was trying to do the same thing here so i tried to find tiles if there are no tiles i return empty now uh what i did here differently is that i didn't pay attention to the first property because it's a list of properties that's why i'm doing it just an array the first one is an object is that right? That, is that what I'm doing? So, um, with this, what I do is basically I, I use this object pool property to extract stuff from the JSON. But at the, at the end, the only thing that I want to know if is I need to face left or right. So what I was thinking here is doing something similar because if there is no tiles, I return an empty list. And 
Yeah, but the problem with the frame is that this one has to be is a list now. Okay, so so if I get animation, then this is not right. Because I need a type animation that will have that it will have the frames. That does make this make any sense? No, I don't think it does. Because no, I need to do it as you say. I think so. I need to type type. Okay, let's do that. So I need a tile where it's going to be, it's going to have, no, uh, it's going to be, you don't need duration, you can skip the frame wrapper and use an integral directly. All right, yeah, I think you're right because I'm not going to use the duration. So, uh, you're in a duration, you can skip the frame wrapper and use an integer directly. Uh, all right, okay. No, but I think, okay, so, so I have tiles, right? So, tiles is going to have. Uh, it's going to have a tile ID. No, it's going to be a list of tiles. Right? Wait a minute. What am I talking about? No. Every single tile, it has to have an ID. Right? And it has to have a list of integers. Uh, so, which is frames. Right? That makes sense. And we don't need the frame. And now I guess I need uh, an instance to read the file. And the tile is going to be uh, just an object, and it's going to have what ID. Let's call it the same, just for sake of. It's already a tile, so it's already an ID. And now we need the frames. Um. And then how do I extract those tile IDs? How, how do I get those frames? I guess we can do... The thing we were doing, right? The get field could be... Because it's going to be a JSON array. Uh, no, maybe. Uh, because... See, the problem I don't know how to do with this is that, yes, we want that list of integers, right? But because I need to reproduce the structure, so how I how do I extract a frame just getting the tile ID? That's what I don't really know how to do with this library. So it gets me a little bit confused. Um, because in here, it has to be the frame, right? And it's a list of integers. But how, how, how do I provide an instance so that the value from the object knows that is to be the tile ID? Terrest can run a sub parser on each array array element. What? Okay, so... So let's say that we get animation. Right? 
Uh, okay. Let me think what we can do with this. Um, I mean, what I was planning to do, I so said my initial plan was to do uh, like this. And I guess. Like this. Uh, sorry, animation. And let's convert that into the other syntax. So doing it like this, I, I know how to do it. Because basically, uh, yeah, I need an instance of animation, but that's it, right? Because So animation is going to have just like this. Maybe animation. I mean in the in this way we're going to have tiles. I mean we can even put it in here, right? So the tile set now it's going to have like this uh, and I don't know what I'm doing the show but let's do it just for the sake of because I've been doing it I don't know why I think because at some point I was printing it so basically, uh, the tile set is going to have at the end it's going to have tiles, right? Which may not be there, right? So you're telling me that I should be using maybe no because uh, it's a list. So if tiles is not there, will it work? To test the final structure as close as possible. I started to roll that in the post processing needed very like very rarely. Yeah, I think I have done that already. You can see JSON map, map data is not really my map data that I use later. It's only for the JSON. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so this is going to look for the tiles. Yeah, but the tiles may not be there. So what I did the other day, and maybe it's what I can do here, is that I can do uh, get field object tiles and then if it's just you can case parsers can i what did i do here what did i do i think that's what i did here right get object property Hmm. So, 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 wait a minute. So, yes, object, uh, and this is a uh, this is tiles. Then, what I do is, um, I'm just lost what I was doing. Uh, then I just do um, tile 
Sorry, I'm just lost now. Um, so tiles is a list of tiles, right? So, which is similar to what I did here. So get object property. Can back from object produce arise, arise. Uh, I think it does because when I'm doing here, okay, I have an example. For example, um, for example, map data, these layers in JSON, JSON map data is a list of layers, right? So I guess. Yeah, it should be doing tile by itself. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so sorry, what I was doing, I I I lost my, I lost completely. So okay, here. So I just need to do what? What do I do? So it should be doing tiles by itself. So you're saying that let it parse the tiles. Yeah, but what if tiles is not there? That's the problem I had before. Okay, so this is not going to work. Because it will work only for tile set that has an have animations. Yeah, an instance for tile. Yes, I have an instance for tile. But it's not going to work. Because it works only if there is tiles. See? Okay, let's finish it and then see the error. Which is, I think is fine. This is finished now. Okay. I think that's what the problem I had before. Unless I was completely confused. And I keep, I st I'm still confused, but right. So yeah, we cannot find the ki the key tiles because there is a tile set that doesn't have it, right? So that's my problem. I don't know how to handle that. And what I did on Tuesday, maybe tile. All right, let's try it. I had the feeling I have been here before. I have done this before and it didn't work. Hey, but I'm happy to try it. I mean, if that's, if that works, then it's amazing because it simplifies, or maybe I tried and I did it wrong or no. Mm -mm. So it's not going to work. Which is what I was trying to fix. I mean, I could be wrong. I have been wrong before. You know more Haskell than me. I don't know anything about what I'm doing. But so the way I solved that the other day is with get field, uh, it returns uh, right. So let's try to do that. Okay. No, it's a library. It's a function of the library. So I would say I will do a get field of object. And I will say tiles, right? If it finds this, it's going to be just yes object. And let's call it tiles. And I'm going to do the value from object from tiles. And for anything else, you know, if it's not the right object or it's nothing, we don't care. Return an empty list. No, not an empty list. <laughs> Sorry. We return uh, a tile of how do we find tile? Uh, 
no, it's an empty list of tiles, right? So it should be fine to do this. Oh, because it has to be a result. Uh, yeah, it's a monad. So let's see here. Okay. And we cross fingers, which seems to help with Haskell frequently. And now it should be picking up, picking the the ties when there is ties and when there is no it should be an empty list so well i don't know it looks like it right at least it's loading the json file um we can potentially print something right so here we could be doing Something like this. There's probably a better way of doing it, but bear with me. And uh, why is it not liking it the way I wrote it? It's because it's not in line. No, it is. So why it doesn't like it? Because of this, now it's just not happy about it. No, it, I'm making things worse. I want to, I want to print the map. How do I do that? Um. Uh, or maybe I don't need to do it, and I can do the tile sets and just print that. So print. Uh, no, uh, it was put this and then show so yeah. All right, so there you go. So we have a tie set, blah, 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 without ties. And the other one, without ties as well. <laughs> well, it's cl getting close, right? Uh, use print. All right. Cool. So I think it's really close, but not quite yet there. So, so this is in the tie set. We're in the tie set. So it's getting columns, all this stuff. And then we asking for ties, but it's not mapping this. Because it's not, it's not a JS, it's a JS array of something like that, of JS object. Oh, 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 I guess. Hmm, could not find the key ties. Huh? Oh. Uh. Uh, can we do this? And... And then... The Why is complaining about this? Pretty much expected it has to be uh, a JS value. Well, can we actually do that? Uh, no. Sorry, let's go back to the problem. So, 
so ooh. so this is a JSON value uh, because it's not that's not what we want uh, so yeah so this is a JSON object um, why I cannot do this oh well it has to be i don't know man what if we do whatever can you give me whatever no because it doesn't like whatever because it needs uh it needs a json object with a json value but if i do this If I do this, uh, then it's not picking it up and it's going down here. Uh, you need to process each item individually. Each individual item with the tiles. Okay. We can do that, right? Because we can say... Okay, no, wait a minute. So, we need to get an yes array, right? And that's going to give me tiles. Which is an array of yes value. Uh, so, we're going to... Traverse, maybe? No. Uh, so... So... It's going to be... Um, a tile. And we're going to do... Bar from object T, I guess. Oh, but I need to say what do I want to get, right? <sighs> so it's not valid from object. Uh, that must be a different way of doing it. Mm. Read JSON, read JSON from tiles. Oh, interesting. Okay. I, I trust you. All right. Uh, no. Doesn't like it. Uh, Monad plus MP. That. What does it mean? What does it mean? So. Um, hmm. Maybe. I don't need to pass. It's a JSON. It's a JS object, right? The title of the animation instant isn't right. So, wait a minute. Uh, so we get tiles. Okay, we get animation. Okay. No, sorry. We get a tile. And a tile has ID, which is an integer, and animation. So, ID and animation. And animation. Uh, no, you're right. So this is not animation. Uh, so animation is indeed a list of integers. Right? You need to repeat the optional wrapper. Do I need to repeat? No, because if there is a tile in here, it's going to have animation. I think. 
uh, what I think we need to do here is that sorry I'm trying to think what, what, what can we do here so wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute so ID so then animation is going to be a list of these a list of let's call it frame and each frame and the frame is going to be only an integer right so I may I don't need to do that do I need to do that I'm trying to think uh no I don't think I do so all right wait, wait a second what is the tile I lost that so the tile has an animation no it doesn't really need that it's a list of integers right because we get that tile id and then oh no we need to get the animation and the animation so it's a uh, oh, oh I'm, I'm super confused right now so so it's a list of animation no it's a list of frames and the frame it's not a, uh it's a list of frames but the frame is just an integer right so the frame is just an integer It's just an integer. Is that how you do it? Yeah. So the instance of frame, the only thing needs to do is get frames and the frames are going to be the tile ID. Yeah, that's about right. Odd val from object. Oh, you just find a gold mine there. I didn't see that one. Damn it. Let's give it a go to that one. Okay. So, yeah, we got the tiles now. So, we have one without, and the other one is a list of tiles. That it has the tile ID and the frames. Okay, let's get rid of that awful case. Well, let's see if it works first, right? So instead of doing this, oh, I see. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let me try something. So you're telling me that I can do opt val. from object and then I can say tails tiles object uh, why is complaining uh, opt pal from object do I need to import that I don't think I, I did anything from Valve from Object. Okay. So there is Val from Object. Did you give you maybe a you manually convert it to yeah. Okay, we can I mean if No, I, I don't see it. Okay, so... Okay, so do I have the documentation somewhere here? Ah, let's search for it, shall we? So... 
Oh, there you go. No, 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 no. That's not even the library I'm using. Oh, dear. Oh, man. What a rollercoaster of emotions. You just... Okay. Fine. I mean, in reality... It's just that doing this is kind of annoying. And also... It seems to be different in here, which is probably something I'm doing wrong, but anyway. So I'm going to do something here. Um, but we on, I only looking for one case, but anyway, I can, I can implement that myself. And now that I know how to do it. So the way it is now, it's definitely working and it's giving me the so if the tiles are there I'm I having I, I have them so if there are no tiles fine if the tile is there there you go perfect mm. is that it yeah I think it is um so now in the render function we need to pass the step right or can we do it in a different way ideas i mean what i will do is just pass an integer then say it's going to step or frame no step because it's not going to be. It's going to be always increasing, right? And then in here. For the tile. The person result uh, has an alternative instance that means you can provide a fallback operator with data applicative all right okay okay let's do let's do something let's see if we can if i can tidy up that and i will do the frame animation the next day because it's a little bit late and i'm probably going to get things worse and worse and worse and worse all right Okay, 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 that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. I mean, that looks much better than what I'm doing. Uh, see, I can't even find the code I added. <laughs> All right, here. So, so instead of doing that, bulk from object, tiles, and then I say, otherwise, give me an empty list. Uh, yeah, but I probably need to put some like this, right? Uh, why is why is not happy? Oh, control uh, applicative, right? Okay, there you go. Is that right? Uh, no, because I need to provide the object. And I guess, do I need the parentheses at all? Yes, I do, of course. Okay. Oh, that's really cool. Thank you. I mean, it's going to simplify a bit of some of the things I did. Yes, yes, very nice. So that means that all this Mambo Jimbo here, it doesn't make, it's not necessary, it's not required. Is it? Well, yes, yes and no, because it helps me with the optional part of it. I guess, but also okay, okay, okay. Let's let's try that. 
I start to do the same here because um, I can do value from object properties uh, and then object and then nothing uh, I guess no okay so what is the default in here uh, I don't know because I need to provide the value of properties pure nothing okay now that has a problem because this is an this is a slightly different case I'm not selecting the date the data um, I'm so what I'm doing here is that yes so the property can be so I need to wrap this in a case then right uh, yes no because this is going to return a result of some properties or nothing right um, but the thing is that I don't really care about the properties I just need to check a flag and then convert that into left or right so I guess um, uh, I guess so this is going to give me what okay maybe a yeah that's cool so can I do a case here and then now it can be just a property Maybe any. <laughs> you need to flat map the original wrapper with just. I need to flat map the original, sorry, F map the original wrapper with just. Okay, so you're saying I do F map and I get prop. Is that what you're saying? You didn't have to do that with, because it's already present in the right. Okay. So I can do this. And then I can do case prop of. see this is soon hopefully um, and now we need to group this in parentheses we agree otherwise it's not going to be okay there are a number of things that are wrong but okay so you may I will be returning maybe dear uh, but it's not returning a result no it's returning a result or maybe dear okay Okay. Uh, no, I don't think it's happy with it. It's still not happy because multiple reasons. Um, so this prop is maybe a JSON object value. So if I do this, I don't think this is actually giving me any benefits because I have to do the same, unless I'm misunderstanding. So, some parser. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, and then, all right, so I made an absolute mess here. Okay, so. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do that. So, so that might just. Okay, so this now. 
Don't give me anything. The option, the option is already in base. I'm confused. Let me try next to the blah blah. All right. So let me do something. So why is not happy with this? Okay, because it's just a result of maybe the isn't it? No, it's not. Sorry, I don't know what you, tr you... I'm not completely sure I understand what you're asking me to do. So, some parts appear nothing or optional action equals... Uh, the right parenthesis is too par. Oh, I see. So this is returning. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. But that's not what I want to do. So I guess I need to do a case here. Because... This is more like it. And I don't want to return, maybe it's going to be dear, right? So... Um, so, if it's a result of prop... No, I can't do that. Apparently I can't. There's no data constructor for result. Um, so, let me think, what can I do? So, mm, what do I want? Well, I want to do pretty much what I was doing before. So basically, you're giving me here maybe of the. Uh, which is not, it's not accurate. Right? Because these properties here, what it's going to give me is to do, 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 do something, 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 object, ball, bull, boolean property. But that's not what I want. Right? So let's take a look um, to what I had before. So what I had before is basically yeah, I, I'm not completely sure this is really doing the same thing. So the thing I was doing here is, you know, give me the properties. If there is no properties, we go with right. Which is something we can do with the new version. Okay, so give me a sec. So Follow from object. Okay. Otherwise, so that is getting closer, right? Yeah. But now, sorry. But now, what's complain about this? Yeah, because it's looking for a deer, but it's not a deer, a direction what we want. Now, this thing here, if it's successful, it's going to give me an object ball property. That is what I'm, that is what I think I'm going to, to leave it the way it was. Because now, what I'm not completely sure about this one is that I'm not completely sure if it's just getting this the first you know it's getting the set the first property that it finds and is the name of the property 
you know, is flip and if the value is true, then the enemy looks to the left. So, so what is, I think is wrong in here is that only checks one property. See, the, what we did with the, before we found, we found the, um, that operator, uh, the, this operator that is simplified in the other case, somewhere here that I just lost it. Uh, mm, this one. So this is simplifying things, but I think what this one needs to do in reality is the traverse. It might just the only property in the array. No, because it has more property. It could have more, but it only matches the first one. What do you mean the only? No, you can have more than one. But if the one, the first one matches, it, it stops. So I think this is this is wrong. Right, let's. No, that's the only. Hmm. Let me see. Okay. So let's go to entities. And let's find a slime that has this tracker, right? So, yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, so basically, oh, sorry, what did I do? The run sets? No, there you go. So, if it finds this property, so basically, it only pays attention to the properties if it's the first one. If there are more, the whole match fails. Oh, I tried that. Potato and it's set, for example. So are we changing this tracker, right? So it should still look to the left. You could be right. Yeah, you're right. It should be looking to the left and it's not. Yeah, the whole match fails. So it only supports one. Uh, so it only works if there is one. Oh, hello, my friend. What are you doing? She fall. Oh man, that's a lot of people. You're going to break Twitch. <laughs> I think the properties tasks are easier solved by in general. For example, collect everything then sort later. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm going to leave that as a something to fix. It's not BS code, of course not. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to do a fix me. And I'm going to add it to, to do, hmm. So, so this is work in progress for now, and we want to, um, want to go, I'm, I'm trying to make a platform game. Yeah. For PC. I'm not doing retro, retro game dev today. So this is what I'm doing, guys. Uh, it's not doing much yet. Uh, just things moving around, different types of uh enemies uh you know some arcade platformer you can get you need to collect all those things and then you go to the next level you know very simple for now i'm just it's just an excuse to to learn a little bit of haskell 
they touch you, you get some immunity for a bit. Different type of enemies. You can go platforms up and down. I mean, it's just for PC. It's not the usual retro gaming stuff that I, that I tend to do. So, of course, it's smooth because it's a PC. It's not an Amstrad or a Spectrum or something like that. Right, okay. Cool. So, yeah, I need to look at this. Well, not strictly speaking, not really need to look at it, but yeah, it would be nice if we were supporting multiple. I mean, I did it like a little bit of as an accident the last day because I was doing it in a very ugly way and now we had the flag, so. So, yeah, okay, so yeah, this is looking really close because. I'm already rendering multiple tie sets. I think the only thing that is missing is uh, just do the animation, right? Which may need a little bit more work. I need to think about that. Um, I can remove that for now. Anyway, guys, thanks you for for the raid and thank you everybody for saying hi. Um, I'm going to leave it for today. It's been pretty good, but it's a little bit late. So thank you for coming. Uh, thank you. Where are you, my friend? Deep, deep wits. There must be a better way of. Referring to you, thank you very much for your help with Haskell. It's been very useful. I have learned a lot, a lot today. I have learned a lot today. New operators, new tricks. Um, Shifo, yeah. Um, I'm currently working. I mean, I can show you. Um, a little bit, very quickly. This one. Let me pause the music because this one has music already. You hear that? Ooh, too loud. There you go. It's for the for the spectrum. Yeah, it's an exclusive. I don't know. I mean, I don't do anything secret anyway. Uh, but it's it's a um, 48k game. Where you know it's the same as Spade as the previous game. Uh, to be honest, I don't remember the map, so we might walk into something that uh, is going to crash the game. Oh no, not yet. I mean, it's still moving smooth-ish, I guess. Ooh. I mean, considering that it's a Spectrum 48k, right? Not too bad. And for example, you walk here and you need the infrared glasses in order to walk around without getting killed. So I'm not going to go there because I don't have the glasses. Um, and yeah, I'm still working on it. 48K. So it only has internal beeper. Um, and I'm trying to aim to a kind of big map, considering. Ah, oh, it has terminals here, but I'm, I think I'm going to remove them because I changed my mind. Oh no, I'm going to get hit on that, uh, and I'm dead. Anyway, it's still it's still working on it. Yeah, I do the art as well. Uh, yeah, this one this one looks interesting. I started this game like uh well this is not the start i mean i'm working on the map which i think i have here so i mean it's going to be a good size for 48k right uh there has a lot of things already but let me let's go to the let me take the player to 
the testing screen so we can see a few things maybe yeah sometimes i get help with the loading screen because obviously i can draw small sprites but oh no i can't <laughs> it doesn't work <laughs> so this used to be the testing screen uh, but it doesn't work anymore so let's go somewhere else where there is something to pick up for example i don't know what is the blaster no to get the blaster you need the glasses so uh, let's do that i mean it's really cool well i mean i think it's cool let me let me cheat a little bit so i can show you how it works so I'm very happy with it. Uh, so this is going to be the glasses now. Let's see you like it. So basically, it's, it's your classic 8-bit video adventure, right? So you can't see anything, but when you find the the infrared Googles, the infrared glasses, you can you can see. And then you can walk around and and to be honest, I don't remember the map. So I started this game like two years ago, but then since then I have made other games, so I was kind of distracted. And my younger son was asking me, what happened with that game that you were doing? And so I've been working again on it because he was interested so uh okay no i can't jump in there i need to do it like this okay so that's the blaster and now it's kind of easier because i can shoot right anyway that is still i mean it's quite fun because my son is going to be six years old tomorrow and and he's helping with the puzzles oh no i fell down which means that i need to go again because we need to get that thing over there so you know it's not it's not it's puzzles it's not the you know the oliver twins type of level of puzzles but there's going to be eight different objects uh you need to navigate I think it's going to be 90, 96 screens. And, and you know, the map is going to be kind of complicated, etc. So, yeah. It should be fun. Yeah, you, I mean, he's probably interested. You can just, you know, push a little bit and he will be a game developer in, in no time. Well, cool guys. Nice to see you, and um, and see you next time again. If you want, you know what I do. I just I'm programming very boring things. You can wait until the game is finished. It's probably more interesting. Anyway, bye now. <laughs>